All right, guys, I want to do uh, something I'm going to call a director series, and it's going to be talking about my four favorite film directors, and there's a lot of directors that I love, and there's a lot of popular good directors like Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, you know, Kevin Smith, which is quite a bit different, I realize, but I like all his movies, Mel Brooks, which is probably one of my favorite comedian directors and, you know, comedies and He'd probably maybe be like my number five, but I'm going to cover four that are completely different and unique. But you've got Alfred Hitchcock, you've got Quentin Tarantino, you've got Woody Allen. So there's tons and tons of awesome directors, and I'd like to talk about them all. I love all their movies, but I really want to talk about what I consider to be my top four. And uh, <clears throat> this is actually my second time recording this video. Uh, so I recorded it in like 720, you know, the highest quality I could, and for some reason the audio and video sync was off, and so I lowered the quality of the video to 480, and hopefully uh, it's going to be right this time. And I forgot that the last time I recorded it, it did the same thing, and that's why I kind of gave up doing videos for a little while, because I finally got around to doing it, and after doing like a... Bible reading a chapter of Proverbs for like 30 minutes to an hour or whatever, I realized the video uh, wasn't right, and that really ticked me off and made me depressed, and so that's why I just kind of started doing audio recordings for a while. Now I finally got back into doing it, and I made the same mistake again, but it was like a 30 minute video, so now I'm going to work at this all day until I get it figured out again, and hopefully, you know, I'll start recording videos more frequent basis, but let's talk about David Lynch. Okay, David Lynch is the first director I'm going to talk about, and he is my absolute favorite director. And it might be kind of cliche to say that, but I don't care, because he really opened up my world to bizarre, different movies. And uh, I've always been a fan of movies all throughout my life, but... You know, as you get older, your taste changes or expands. You know, when you're young, you love the Walt Disney movies, you love the cartoons and stuff. You're not going to be into Quentin Tarantino's movies, really, when you're really young, because you're not going to understand them. I remember watching Pulp Fiction a long time ago with my dad, and I didn't have any idea, you know, what was going on, really. Um, but then, you know, it's totally different when you watch it later when you're older. Anyway, I remember around the time when I was 18, somebody introduced me to the movie Fight Club, and I really loved that because it was so different, and, you know, I started watching other movies like Memento and the Quentin Tarantino movies again, like I said, a lot of these cult classics, and the internet was really popular, so I was always searching, trying to find new movies, and there was always these lists of bizarre, strange movies, must-see cult movies, you know, uh, and anyways... This movie, Eraserhead, was always on the list. This guy with the crazy hair, and I was always like, I always see that in every list, so eventually it's like, I'm going to have to watch that. And I think that I did find it at Family Video. I think that the first time that I watched it, I rented it from Family Video. This is the Criterion Collection, which I'm really blessed to own, and <clears throat> quite a few of David Lynch's movies are Criterion Collection, and... Uh, <sighs> Wow. What I want to say is, I don't know. I had a little bit of a like, moment, but whatever. Anyways, I'm going to show some of the artwork on here. And uh, so this is a black and white movie. It's very artsy. It's almost like a silent film. There's very little dialogue, but there is a lot of sound. And it's like white noise, a lot of sound effects. It's a very dreamlike movie, kind of nightmarish. Um, there are parts that startled me when I watched it. And this is a very young David Lynch. Looks different there. Uh, so, and I want to say that David Lynch is an American filmmaker. So, yeah, go America. Um, but this movie was totally different than anything I'd ever seen at the time. It's, uh, it's like an artistic experience, and um, basically the plot is this guy uh, has a girlfriend that he has a kid with, a baby, 
But this baby is like deformed. It's like an animal or like a monster. It's not even like a a human really. And it just cries and makes noise all the time. And there's just a lot of scenery, uh, dreamlike scenery. And there's you know scenes where he goes and visits the woman's family, and there's a lot of bizarre stuff that happens there. And they're living together, and she can't stay in the baby crying stuff, so she leaves. He sleeps with the neighbor woman. There's this dreamlike sequence where his head pops off, and then a little boy, you know, falls from the sky onto the ground. The boy picks up his head, takes it to like a eraser, like a pencil eraser factory, and that's how they make erasers for pencils, is like out of his head. And so you're like, well, that sounds really weird. It is. <laughs> and that's why I love it. It's totally different. But this movie is not for everybody. A lot of people aren't going to like this movie, and I totally understand that. Um, this is really for somebody who really likes artistic things, wants something completely different. And really, this is like my number one favorite movie. But I always tell people that Sling Blade's my favorite movie because I think that everybody would love Sling Blade. And this is kind of like my shadow mystery favorite movie because a lot of people haven't seen it. And even if they did, they probably wouldn't like it. So I'm like, I'm not even going to get into that. But I just suggest that if you do like different things, I kind of want to move quickly because I already recorded this video. But um, so David Lynch, yeah, he's been filming since you know the 1970s. This was 1977. This says, A Dream of Dark and Troubling Things. David Lynch's 1977 debut feature, Eraserhead, is both a lasting cult sensation and a work of extraordinary craft and beauty. With its mesmerizing black and white photography by Frederick Elms and Herbert Cardwell, evocative sound design, and unforgettably enigmatic, enigmatic uh, performance by Jack Nance, this visionary nocturnal odyssey continues to haunt American cinema like no other film. So, a lot more could be said about that, but anyway, just going over that briefly. It's very surreal imagery. Um, <clears throat> so David Lynch is like the king of surreal, and I think that the next movie that I watched was Mulholland Drive. I'm not sure, but this is also a Criterion Collection. I haven't opened this yet because I'm saving it, so uh, eventually I'll get in there and open that up, but... I kind of sometimes, I've already watched this and um, before, and sometimes I just, I don't always open stuff right away because that way it's kind of like a gift save for myself for later, but um, this uh, might be a little more liked by people than Eraserhead because this has a lot more dialogue and it's in color. But it's basically about this woman who gets in a car wreck or something. She gets amnesia, and it's in L.A., and she meets, like, this actress. And the actress tries to help her find her identity. And there's just a lot of weird, surreal, bizarre stuff in this movie, and creepy stuff also. Again, I'm just going to move along because I already did this. Lost Highway, pretty much kind of the same idea. It's pretty surreal. I don't know what to say about this a lot. It's been a while since I've watched it. I need to watch it again. Um, but, you know, the, the scene that is memorable to me is when this guy comes up to the, the main actor at the party and he says there's a, a call for you, like on the cell phone. And he answers it, and the guy on the line is the guy who just handed him the phone, and he's still standing in front of him. And the guy is like, I'm at your house. <laughs> it's like, this is weird. Like, what? Um, Mahal and Drive, you know, another a scene that sticks out in that for me is when <clears throat> there's this guy telling a story about a dream that he had about a guy behind a dumpster. <laughs> and he's like, I don't ever want to see that face again. And it creeps you out because it, like, slowly goes behind the dumpster. And this guy, like, pops out and... David Lynch really has a way with his surrealism. Another movie that's really popular that I think is going to be a lot more liked than the other two that I just mentioned is Blue Velvet. This has Kyle MacLachlan in it and Laura Dern, which appear in his stuff more than once. And uh, this is about a boy who finds an ear in a field and he tries to, he's like out of high school or whatever, and, or from college, and um, he has this girlfriend that 
he tries to um, have help him to find out what's the deal with this ear that he found. And there's this lounge singer woman, and um, Dennis Hopper plays uh, the psycho who's like obsessed with this woman, and he like captured her husband, and I think he cut off the husband's ear, and that's where it came from. And Dennis Hopper's character puts on like this mask, like an oxygen mask or whatever, but he inhales some kind of drug that makes him high, and it changes his voice, and he gets like really psycho. This is a great movie. I think a lot of people would like this. It's pretty crazy, and uh, but it's not as it's not surreal as much like as the other movies. Wild at Heart. Okay, I watched this once. It's been a while, so I can't really say a lot about it except for it has Nicolas Cage and Laura Dern. And uh, this is a Shout Select, Shout Factory. It's kind of like Criterion. They put out some pretty good quality stuff. Um, but I do remember this being a little bit like The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so there's a lot of surrealism in this. Um, so I can't say a lot about this because it's been so long. And uh, I don't remember what it is about Wizard of Oz. Maybe it's because there's like a a good witch or something uh, or the wicked witch I don't know I need to watch it again I'm biased and I love everything that David Lynch has done okay Inland Empire is probably the closest to Eraserhead maybe even crazier than Eraserhead I don't know but it stars Lord Dern and it's about uh, it's a movie about making a movie <laughs> and uh, it's really hard to explain any kind of plot because it's just so it just gets crazy and you don't know like what's real and what's not and there's just a lot of symbolism and this movie is definitely a journey and experience that I also remember renting this from Family Video but this is really one of my favorites too but like it's hard to pick a favorite out of David Lynch's stuff but I, Eraserhead definitely this no, Inland Empire might be one of my second ones, I don't know. Now I want to talk about these now. This is a DVD that I have of David Lynch, and um, there's going to be a Criterion collection coming out in September of this movie, and so I'm going to pre-order that tonight, actually, but that is Elephant Man. Now this is just kind of like a straightforward drama. It's based on a true story. Um, I'll read the back of this. It says, All the human spirit needs to thrive is a chance. In one of his most legendary films, director David Lynch chronicles the intense emotional journey of a complex, lonely man and the dedicated surgeon who changed his life. John Merrick uh, was born with a horribly disfiguring congenital disease, uh, elephantitis, and so this is based on a true story, and that's uh, John Merrick. And he suffered the humiliation of being a sideshow freak only when the London doctor, Frederick Treves, or trees or whatever, played by Anthony Hopkins, who is in The Silence of the Lands. He rescues him. Uh, does Merrick begin to regain the life of dignity and respect that everyone deserves? Based on a true story, the critically acclaimed Oscar-nominated film has earned its place in cinematic history. Uh, Lynch has created a haunting masterpiece of compassion, beauty, and ultimately humanity. It's a wonderful movie. It's not all bizarre and crazy and surreal like his other movies that I talked about. This is straightforward, and I think that anybody could love this movie. The same goes for this movie, which is presented by Walt Disney. It's it pretty interesting. But um, it's called The Straight Story. It's also based on a true story. It's also like a drama. And it's about this guy named Alvin Straight. And um, he had a brother who he argued with but his brother was dying and he wanted to go see him his vision isn't very good so he couldn't drive a regular vehicle so he drove a tractor like across the state or across a couple states whatever um, and it also has Sissy Spacek in it as his daughter for a little while but it's about his journey to his brother on the lawnmower and it's a good movie it's really good it's David Lynch so you gotta love it now um, this one I actually haven't seen, so shame to say that, but I need to sit down and watch through this whole thing, and that is Dune. This is what David Lynch says I think is, uh, was a failure, I think. I don't know, but I'm biased, so I know I'm going to love it. From the previews, it looks really good. I know it's really long, it's really ambitious. It's based on a book, and I don't know if it's really accurate to the book, and I don't really care about that stuff, so 
as long as the movie's good and it, st it stars Kyle MacLachlan again and uh, I think that it's it's a sci-fi movie so I think a lot of sci-fi people would probably like this movie be interested in that but I can't really say a whole lot about it because I need to watch that one now last but not least and I want to say that I own pretty much all of David Lynch's movies this is about it and um, he has some short films I think there's a criteria on like documentary on him and I want to get all that stuff eventually but this is really like the meat like everything that I have here and so some of the other directors that I'm going to talk about I don't own like all of their works I haven't seen everything they've done but I have I'm going to talk about what I do have and I have what I think are my favorites but this I really love and that is Twin Peaks okay all the seasons and the the movie and so this is really special to me because my cousin got me this for my 30th birthday and this is really kind of what spawned my movie collection because at the time I kind of gave up on collecting movies and stuff living with my mom and going through a lot in life and he knew that I loved this and he got me this and I was like you know I didn't really care about owning DVDs but I was like you know what it is pretty special to have this I really do enjoy this and then I kinda and then I wanted to get Sling Blade and I wanted to get other stuff that I loved and so this is the definitive gold box. This is the first two seasons of Twin Peaks, which originally aired on ABC, I think. I like to say that this is like a supernatural murder mystery TV show, a drama. It starts off with this girl named Laura Palmer. Her body is found wrapped in plastic. Uh, she's been killed, and it's a small town. It affects everybody, and they try to find out who the killer is. And so there's a lot of characters in this movie. There's a lot of love triangles and stuff going on. But there are supernatural things going on in the town. The sheriff's one of the main characters, but then there's this FBI agent, Agent Cooper, who is Kyle McLaughlin. He comes in on the case. Find out that there's like spirits or like demons that are involved in this. And uh, so, you know, it could be kind of similar to the X Files, but not really. It's really a show that's unique on its own. Then I don't know how much longer it was, like 20 years later or something, they finally came out with like a third season. And this was on HBO. I watched this with my mom as it was on, and uh, I loved every bit of it. And uh, it's just amazing. And I've shown, I've let people borrow these and watch them, and they love Twin Peaks. It's on Netflix, it's on Hulu and everything. This movie came out after the first two seasons, and the show was kind of cut off abruptly. Um, but this was like a prequel and this is another criterion and this was that's Laura Palmer so this was about what happened before her murder and the events leading up to that and uh, I really love this so that's David Lynch for you check out these movies the TV show I'd like to say a lot more, but after going over a 30-minute video already, we've knocked this down to 20 almost, so I just want to keep it there. So, I love David Lynch. He's my all-time favorite director. I love all of his shorts. Um, I don't know. I mean, he's pretty old now. I don't know if there's going to be anything else coming out of him, but uh, I'd be pleased enough if not. I mean, he got that final third season of Twin Peaks. just blows me away. So, I need to watch Dune, and I'm excited to get Elephant Man on the Criterion Collection. So, I mean, I love David Lynch, and I love Criterion, and they're like a match made in heaven. And it's like, even though that I already own the D DVD, I don't care. I want the better quality version of it for him, for sure. So, uh, <clears throat> alright guys, thanks. God bless. I'll be back soon with the next director.